Hey guys, welcome back. Today I'd like to show you guys a neat little circuit. I didn't design this circuit, but I did prepare it for you guys. Um, I'll put a link in the description where I found it, and I'll put a, the circuit up right here. And so this is kind of what you get when you search for a triple five timer PWM circuit. And it looks a little daunting if you're new, but I'm telling you this circuit is actually pretty simple. I'll show you how to build it and I'll show you how to organize it a little bit so you get to see what it's what it's all about. It's also very useful because you can use it to drive motors and fans and uh, inductive loads, all sorts of things. So I figure it's a great place for a beginner to go. You can build up the circuit for under a dollar. I think it's actually quite a distance under a dollar. And I will use this circuit myself to try to learn uh, KiCad and try to get some circuit boards printed up. So here is how I organize the circuit. It looks a little daunting on the image search, but I think if you just draw out your triple five timer and sort of uh, go at it pin by pin, you can sort of organize it in a way that it's not as scary. So here's the triple five timer and, and literally you only need the triple five timer a 1k uh, resistor, a 50k pot, two diodes, um, I'm using a 1N4001 I think. These are the basically the cheapest diodes I could find I think at the time. Yeah, 1N4001 um, and a 0.1 microfarad cap and a 0.01 microfarad cap. But we're going to talk about these at the end, I think, because I think I have some improvements to the circuit right off the bat. So here's the triple five timer. This is an NE555P, and I believe this one is actually a eBay counterfeit. So don't get too caught up on whether or not you need a legit one. I'm telling you, you probably don't. So I put that in our breadboard. Also, I have the rails here, just negative to negative and positive to positive. Um, they're just linked, no problem. So let's start on this side, the one, two, three, and four pins. Uh, three is output, so there's really nothing to do. I have this wire here to hook up to the output. Uh, four is just going to go to VCC. And I'm trying to remember, I think I used this guy when I was practicing this circuit. Uh, yeah, sure. So pin 4 to plus 12 volts. I think this runs on a range of voltages, but 12 volts is um, recommended by the creator. Um, output nothing. 1 goes to ground, so I'll use one of these short links here. Just link that to ground there. That one's done. Um, and then 2 goes to 6 and so you just cross over the chip on top like that and voila alright so on the other side um, 8 just goes to 12 volts so again that's very simple use a short link 8 to 12 volts like that and then this is kinda the end of the super simple stuff the, this stuff is also simple but not as simple so we'll go from 8 to 7 here we need a 1k resistor and I just put my 1k standing up like this there are some uh, some products that were through hole that use resistors like this take up less space so I just folded it up like that and it fits very nicely in the circuit you actually actually turn it around um, this way so that it fits even nicer. So there we go. That fits very well. Actually, I'm going to... You know what? Yeah, uh, it's fine. We're going to get to this side after. There are some little modifications here. Um, a 50k ohm resist uh, potentiometer, sorry. And you can use a big one with the knob, but that brings the cost up. And especially if you're a beginner, I recommend to buy cheap components. You don't want to be spending a lot of money 
especially because you want to get a variety of components. So this little guy here, but you know, if you know you're building this in a permanent manner, go ahead and get the um, get the big one with the knob. But uh, I'll show you why it may not be a good idea later. So I'm going to stuff this. Um, I don't remember how I had it. I think I have it like this over here like that. I put it kind of in the middle so we can hook up to pin 17 here and we can pick up these two pins on the other side here. Okay, so now we need two diodes and the diodes are going to go to the ends of the pot. See how it goes through the entire resistor here? So they go from pin 7 which is um, the one one above where we linked across. Okay, pin 7 to one of the pins of the pot and you make sure that your diodes face in opposite directions. So this one here has the uh, cathode that way and this one I'll go in the front here so I don't um, I don't short anything out. I'm gonna st stuff that into pin 6. Uh, it goes here 18 to 6 like that and you see the diodes have opposing directions. Now what's neat is that you can change the way you have to turn this pot to adjust it simply by switching the polarities of these two diodes with each other. Then pin 6 which is the one our yellow wire is going to here um, it goes to the center of the pot. So I'm just going to grab wire here middle of the pot like that to pin 6 in there that's done uh, and then pin 6 goes to ground through a 0.1 microfarad capacitor I choose these ceramic capacitors but pretty much anything with the right value will be fine so 104 that's 10 with four zeros that's a hundred thousand picofarad so that translates to 0.1 microfarads so we're going to grab uh, 6 to ground over here, 6 to ground, and then 0 0.01 microfarads from 5 to ground. And so 5 is over here, and that is uh, 103, so it's 10 zero with 3 zero, that's 10k picofarad, therefore 0 0.01 microfarad. And there we go. And so um, now I'm going to put this orange wire here in pin 3. And now that is our output. I'm going to feed this with 12 volts. So I have my little power supply here off to the side. I need the screen real estate and you'll see why for in a second. Put this in here and this in here. Okay and now we can just turn this on and as long as this doesn't blow up which it's not blowing up it is using 10, 9 to 10 milliamps nearly nothing and now it's time to hook up the scope so let me grab the scope and we'll see if we're getting an output out of this got the scope all set up which you're gonna see over here and that means I can go and grab my lead. We're on uh, channel one. The pot's kind of in the middle. I haven't really fiddled with it yet, but here we go. Uh, oh yeah, should connect to ground too. That's what this other wire is for. So I'm going to hook up the scope ground, which is this little uh, crocodile clip here, just so we're all speaking the same language, and probe. Oh, that's a little bit more zoomed in than I wanted it to, but that's okay. I have been playing with this earlier. So see so we've got a nice square wave here. I'm actually going to drop this down a bit. So we got a nice square wave. Um, some of you will have seen it already but I want to draw your attention to something real quick we are putting 12.05 volts into this circuit from my power supply 
And if you'll just look over here, you'll see I've got 13.3-ish volts peak to peak. So we're going to talk about that in just a minute. But first, I want to demonstrate here. Now this is not just a regular square wave. Like I said, it's a PWM controller or generator. I'm just going to turn the pot here. You see how the on time becomes longer? Then I turned it the other way. And now the off time becomes longer. And you can make it pretty much to nothing. And then pretty much all the way up to all on. But something I want you to notice is the frequency down here. This guy trying to point without knocking everything down. Right over here. You see that frequency? As I sweep, the frequency goes up and down. That's a um, that's actually part of this circuit. The circuit does that. When you do a PWM type generator with a triple five timer, you typically get a switch in frequency because basically what you're doing is charging and discharging the um, comparator or bringing up and down the voltage to the comparator through any side of this. Um, well, one than the other side of this potentiometer. So we're actually going at a pretty low frequency. 500 hertz is actually fairly low. You know, common um, microcontrollers will probably be able to go into the kilohertz range, no problem. But this is, don't forget, this is a sub $1 solution. This is probably, if you bought, if you wanted to make 100 of these, it would probably cost you somewhere around 25 cents each circuit, maybe 50 cents each circuit. So this is very inexpensive. But I want to draw your attention here to that peak to peak. How are we getting 13 volts peak to peak if we're only putting in about 12 volts of voltage in here? Well, this is where the scope comes in. So we can actually zoom in and look at our waveform. I'm just going to split the voltage per division here. So 5 volts per division. And you see this point right here, that little, that spike? So I'm going to keep scaling the time base. Huh, look at that. We're creating some overshoot probably because we're, we're pulling a lot of current, well, not a lot of current, but for a semiconductor like this, a lot of current from the voltage rail. And the way to kind of smoothen that out is to put a capacitor across the rail. So I'm going to take a, a 10 nano, so or a 0.1 nano, I should say. So it's a 104 ceramic cap. So again, this would increase our bill of materials by a few cents. I'm going to put it across the rail here and look at our spike. It's nearly completely vanished just by adding a few cents worth of a capacitor across that. It just means that the um, basically any spikes created by rapid switching get dealt with, get smoothed out because there's a capacitor to kind of absorb it. And also any sort of like downward spike will actually be supplied voltage by this cap. So it's usually a good idea to, to put a cap across the the power rails and in fact I'm going to try to just put a second one in parallel and see what happens and you see that one does nearly nothing yeah barely a change this off this on so that's again that's on that's off whoops I pulled the other one out by accident there we go so you see the the basically you only need to add a 10, uh, like a 0.1 microfarad cap there. The original designer of the circuit did not put that in, and therefore we had something a little different going on. So this is better. So we have 12.2. There's still a little bit of overshoot, but uh, I think I think that's okay. I think we're good there. Now another thing I want to show you is I'm going to turn off the power supply. So I'm going to hit set. Okay, I'm going to lift off this uh, 50k ohm potentiometer 
and I'm going to put in a 10k ohm potentiometer. So we're basically dividing the resistance um, in 5 by 5. Is that correct? Got to make sure I got it lined up. Okay, I'm going to power it back on. Okay, not sure if I'm lined up here. Give me a second. Should be working. Ah, oh, there we go. We got it. So here we go. You, you see that the waveform here is very similar. It didn't change very much, right? Let me zoom that out for you, though, uh, this way. Okay, whoops. Okay, so it's you see the duty cycle is roughly 50% here. So it's 50% off, 50% on. We still have a little bit of shoot here. And that's kind of normal because we changed something. Look at the frequency now. It's near 3 kilohertz. So I'm going to sweep this across its range. So being almost off, and this is as far as I can go, by the way, because now we're biased by this 1K resistor does a lot more. We could probably change this 1K for a 200 ohm up here. Um, this one here. If we put a 200 ohm, it might be better. But uh, 3.2 kilohertz. And we're going to spin this around. And we're going 3.6 kilohertz. So as you can see, we have much higher frequency here. And um, just checking the power supply, we're drawing a little bit less current. Um, but it's just simply because we're probably storing more in the capacitor across the rail there. So just something to keep in mind, if you need a higher frequency, uh, you're going to have to go with a smaller pot, and I would probably change this 100 ohm to a 200 ohm. So that's another thing to do. Actually, give me a second. I'll go get a 200 ohm resistor, and we'll see what effect that has on the low end. Because as you can see here, I can only bring it down to about 90-ish or 80-ish percent off. I can't bring it all the way off. So let me just see what I can do. I'll find a 200 ohm resistor and I'll be right back. I've actually found a 220 ohm resistor. So 220 is red, red, black, black. So red, red, black would be uh, 220 and then the black will be times one. So 220 ohms. I'm going to turn off power supply, pull out the 1K. And I actually haven't tested this, so this will be interesting, but I can't see why it wouldn't work. Um, over here and over here to bend the resistor at weird angles because I didn't actually trim the leads off this one and go oh, we're getting some crazy ringing going on here I think we might be pulling yeah we're pulling a lot more current now 15 milliamps so let's wind this up yeah now it goes almost completely off and almost completely on. So there we go. Just a simple little uh, triple five timer circuit. I've seen some of the YouTubers I watch, they use an Arduino E type PWM controller, and I just think this is a lot more efficient. Um, it's not, okay, sorry, not efficient, cost effective. And also, it's a great excuse for me to learn KiCad. So if you like this video, you know, consider hitting like, consider subscribing. And if not, well, let me know why in the comments below. But either way, thanks for watching.